Welcome to Firebase release notes for January, where you cover recent big and small updates from Firebase. Now we have seven topics today, so let's dig in right away. There were a bunch of updates to Firestore, and we're starting off with support for having multiple Firestore databases in a single project. We've been rolling this out as a preview release since mid last year, and we've now completed all the features on the cloud side. So we're changing it to general availability. On the Firebase side of things, while all SDKs are up to date, you can still only see the default database of a project in your Firebase console. We're working on adding support for the non-default databases there too, but for now, switch to the Google Cloud Console to see the data in your non-default Firestore databases. Last month, I told you that the sum and average operators had been added to version 12 of our admin SDK for Node.js. Many of you then tried to use these new Firestore operators in your cloud functions, and guess what? It didn't work there yet. That's my bad for not calling it out, and thank you for bringing it to my attention. Thanks to your reports, we've rolled out version 4.6 of the Fibus SDK for cloud functions, which includes the required peer dependency for the new admin SDK version. So update to the latest Firebase functions to use the sum and average operators in your cloud functions. And on the topic of the sum and average operators in Firestore, you can now use them in your Flutter apps too. To ensure that it aligns with how these aggregations look on other platforms, the Flutter code looks a bit different from how you could already count documents. Here's a code sample of using all the aggregations, count, sum, and average in a single Flutter snippet. So upgrade to the latest Cloud Firestore package today and start calculating sum and average values of fields without needing to read the entire documents. In our constant move to make Firestore available close to your users and to allow you to meet regulatory requirements, we keep adding Firestore to more servers in more data centers around the world. And we just added it to our data centers in Demam and in Belgium, bringing us to a total of 30 regional locations. And keep in mind that Firestore is also available in multi-region locations in Europe and North America, as we can see here. If you use one of these multi-region locations, your data is automatically replicated to multiple regional locations in that area to maximize its availability and durability. And our final Firestore topic is about the Key Visualizer. As you may know, the Key Visualizer lets you visually explore your Firestore data structure, identify issues, and understand query behavior. Its index scan feature lets you focus on writes and reads on Firestore's indexes, and it has just graduated to general availability. Firebase Cloud Messaging is our no-cost cross-platform messaging solution that lets you send messages from your server to the app while the user is not actively using it. You can use this for things like notifying the app that new email or other data is available to synchronize, or to send notification messages to drive user re-engagement and retention. We just added a page to our documentation with best practices for sending FCM messages at scale. This covers topics like the request per second quota that each project gets, how to make the most of that quota by spreading out the API calls over a whole minute interval, how to use Jitter to minimize the chances of being throttled by the FCM servers, and how to use exponential backoff just in case you do get throttled. My personal favorite best practice is to separate the delivery of a message from the display of the notification. Many use cases allow for this practice of pre-sending the data for a notification. For example, you can send a message with the necessary data right away when the data becomes available on the server. And then you hold the data on the device until it's time to display it with a local notification. There are many more great practices in the documentation. So read it today with the link in the description and check back here in a few weeks to catch Marina's deep dive video on the topic. Those were all the updates we have for today. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. Now, my name is Frank, or Puff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.